Now let's start going a little bit deeper on each of the different types of operators. So like we said, operators is the word we use for our individual nodes inside of Touch Designer. And there are six different families of operators. And you can see already just inside of our default template, we've got these kind of bluey purple ones, we've got these green ones, and then we've got these gray ones. And we'll take a look at all of them kind of right now as we go through. So the first thing that you probably want to learn about is the tops, which are short for texture operators. Now tops, if we open up our op create dialog as always, they're kind of the default one that are here. Uh, these are all the purpley kind of blue ones. And like I said, these are texture operators. So what they do is they work exclusively with textures. So whether that's images, movies, whether you're doing 2D kind of drawings, like maybe you want to make a rectangle, you know, all of these things are focused on 2D graphics, rasterized graphics. If, if you come from maybe a 3D background already, um, movies, images, getting, you know, video inputs and outputs from different kinds of hardware, all of these fall within the family of tops. So now the next family of operators that's very important are called chops. And what you can see is if I go to my network kind of op create dialog here, when I started with my tops, I can see the six different families across the top here. And clicking on each one will reveal all the operators of that different family. So the next important one that we should take a look at are chops, which are short for channel operators. Now channel operators really focus on you know, different kinds of signals, communication, really numeric data, control data in that sense. So when we think about, you know, even in this little template project, we have this randomly generated noise value. You know, we can do things like make LFOs, you know, any type of control data, whether that's MIDI, OSC coming in from other applications, whether we're trying to create user interfaces with buttons and triggers, even though the actual user interface element is coming from a different family, the data, the control signal that it generates is going to be a chop. So chops are all about numeric data and what we, we call that kind of numeric data channels. Now, the next important family of operators are called DATs, D-A-T. And these are short for data operators. And these are kind of your pink, more pinky purple kind of color family of operators. And data operators are really important for a number of reasons. The first is that they handle all of our kind of string level of data. So like we mentioned, chops are really for our numeric data, signals, uh, control channels, those kind of things. Dats are more similar to, you know, if we had a table and we wanted to keep a bunch of information inside of the table, you know, those kind of things can be kept inside of tables. We can keep text. We can add Python scripting, which we're not going to cover in this training. But as you, you know, become more comfortable with Touch Designer and you want to start using Python scripting, you're going to use DATS a lot. Basically, you know, if you start talking to web APIs and you're doing things like using HTTP requests to get information from an API, all of that is going to be handled in DATS. So DATS are a really important operator family. The next family of operators is probably one of the more unique ones to Touch Designer are SOPs, which are surface operators. And what that means is these are all of the operators that are focused on 3D geometry and more specifically, really that procedural 3D geometry. And if you come from either a Houdini background or you know of Houdini, you know, that's Houdini really laid the groundwork for what procedural 3D is, how it could work, the power of it, and Touch Designer builds on that in a real-time sense. So for example, you could do something like, you know, generate a 3D sphere and then maybe connect that to something like a noise. And even with these two operators, you kind of have this real-time generated 3D kind of little blob thing doing its, you know, whatever it's doing. And this is, this is the, the job of SOPs. And these are all the light blue operators. These are all operators focused on 3D geometry, working on 3D geometry, working on surfaces, which is just another term for kind of a 3D surface. And even though we're looking at this and we're seeing 3D, and this kind of applies to all the families, behind the scenes, this is all just data. This is all just point data, positions, colors. 
you know, we'll talk about later how to move data between different families, but you can always think about these things in their simplest form as just data. And then our operator families kind of just visualize that data differently. So with that said, another very important family of operators are the comps, which are short for component operators. Now comps serve a bunch of different functions. So it's important that we cover each one. And, and what you can see is when you come to this comp page, you already have them organized in three different columns. Whereas, you know, in all of our other operator families, it's just a kind of alphabetized giant list of operators. But for comps, we have them even subdivided further. So one of the really important ones that you'll start using even as a beginner are panels. And panels are basically UI elements. So you can see here we have buttons. So if I create a button, you know, I can activate the viewer here and I have this little button I can click on. I can make a slider, you know, basically anything that the user might interact with, whether it's in a user interface or whether you're making it for your own control interface in your own application, the panel components of the comps are where you want to be looking. Now panels also have something called container and, you know, other has base, but container is going to be our focus. Container is an interesting one because it serves two functions. The first is it can hold and group different elements of our user interfaces. And if you're interested in that afterwards, you can go check out our, our user interface training. But like you can see, similar to how we had here, it can also hold other operators. And, and these are the operators that we can go inside. So for example, in this container, I can zoom in and then I'm inside of a new network slash project one slash container one, you know, inside of here, I can make a bunch of different kind of operators. And then these are all contained within that container one operator. So comps also have that dual functionality in particular containers. I mean, you can go inside of buttons and you'll see that there's already some stuff in there, but usually you won't be going inside of buttons and sliders and things like this. You're probably exclusively going to be using containers when you want to organize the different parts of your network. Now, another aspect of components are the 3d objects. And you might be wondering, well, why are there 3D objects here, even though we said SOPs are where you do all your 3D work? Well, the components really handle the rendering side of our 3D operators. So, you know, they're not going to be SOPs where you can plug in, plug a sphere into a thing and then have it do some stuff. This is more once you're done your whole chain of SOPs, you're going to need something like a camera or, you know, a light. These kind of elements that make up a 3D scene are contained within this. 3D objects area of the comps. Two other really important uses of comps are one is the window comp, which we'll look at later. That's how you kind of take your final product and assign it as a big window that's going to cover your screen or projector or LED wall. How you get from your final content to that display is going to be using a window comp. And then finally, you have this other section, which, you know, like we've already been talking about window comp holds the miscellaneous operators that are still pretty important. For example, we talked about window comp. There's an animation comp if you need to do any keyframes, things like replicator, which are kind of a little bit more advanced. But other is kind of our catch-all where it holds any other components. Now, the final group of operators are mats, which are material operators. And you can already see there's not that many of them because this is really just for processing and working on the materials that are then going to be applied to your 3D geometries when they get rendered. So a lot of the time you'll just be importing textures or using different you know, videos or content that you're generating as a texture. And these different materials like the constant material or a Fong material you know, if you're coming from a 3D background, you're probably familiar with PBRs and Substance Designer, like all these different kinds of materials are available inside of Touch Designer. Now, you've probably seen me doing a, a something a little bit so far, which I haven't explained, but all of the operators have viewers. And you might be thinking, well, thanks tips, like of course they have viewers. That's what makes Touch Designer cool is we can see all of the elements of the process happening. But what I mean is that you can interact with all these viewers in different ways. So for example, this little plus button at the bottom, and if you hover your mouse over, it says viewer active. What this does is, you know, when we started at the beginning, if you left click and drag on an operator, 
you're basically just dragging that whole operator around. But if you left click on a viewer, you'll see that all of a sudden left clicking and dragging doesn't move the operator because now you're interacting with the content inside. Now it's important to know that you're interacting with the content inside of it only in the capacity of viewing. So, you know, if I'm moving this around or zooming in, that's not affecting the output. It's only affecting the viewer that I'm looking at. So you can see here, left clicking and dragging on a 2D texture from our top family functions in a sense that I can left click and drag to transform it, to like pan it around, translate it. I can middle click and drag to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, right click and drag doesn't really do anything on a texture in this case, but there's a lot of different things that we can do. And in each operator family has a unique way of interacting with it. So for example, you know, I can interact with chops in a different way, you know, doing different things like changing the values of the, the scale of the grid I'm looking at. You know, if I bring a, a SOP, maybe something like a box, activating its viewer gives me kind of this 3D little viewer that I can tumble around and, and look at this operator and, and maybe figure out why it's working or why it's not working. But all the operators have viewers and you can click this little plus button. And when you see that the kind of boundaries and color of that operator disappear, that means that viewer is active and you can kind of interact with it dynamically. So that should give you a good foundation of, of operators, what the different families do, and just kind of basically interacting with them. So let's keep going.